Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Art Deco is a design style that began in the 1920s and flourished internationally in the 1930s and 40s. Its linear symmetry and clean lines were embraced by every industry and it showed in their posters. I created this movie poster featuring a stylized drawing of James Cagney who is an iconic actor during the heyday of the Art Deco movement. The size of this document is 15 by 20 inches with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. I use this poster as a template. We'll unnest it by dragging out its tab. We'll refer back to it throughout this tutorial, but for now we'll minimize it. Go to the Layers panel and click on the New Layer icon. Click on the foreground color box and when the color picker window opens choose a bright color. Call up your pencil tool and then press the letter Z to call up your magnifier tool. Click and drag across to magnify up the face. We're going to make a minimal interpretation of the face by making a single dot for his eye and straight lines for his nose, mouth, ears and other features. Follow contours but keep it extremely simple. To make this into a selection, press Control or Command as you click on the layer. We'll save the selection by going to Select, Save Selection, and we'll name this Face Lines. Let's rename this layer Face Lines also. Click off the eyeball to hide it and we'll make the face layer active. We need to make a selection of the hair. There are many ways to do this, so choose the method that's best for you. For now, I'm using the pen tool. I'll be going over how to use the pen tool in a future tutorial. If you are using the pen tool, after the path is closed, right click on it and choose Make Selection. And then press Ctrl or Command J to cut out the hair and place it on its own layer. We'll rename this layer Hair. Make the face lines layer visible and press Ctrl or Command as you click on the layer to call up its selection. Press the quick mask icon to make the selection into a quick mask. Since our face lines and quick mask are both red, let's change the color of the quick mask so we can see the face lines. Double click on the quick mask icon and then click on the color when the quick mask options opens and then let's choose green to set it apart from the red lines. Press B for the brush tool and make sure your foreground color is white then draw a line from one ear to the other. Press the letter G to get your bucket tool and click down. Now press Q to make it into a selection. Let's save the selection and we'll name it Face Shape. Click on the new layer icon as you press Ctrl or Command this will place a layer below your active layer. Press D to make the foreground black and the background white and then press Alt or Option Delete to fill the selection with black. Press Ctrl or Command D to get rid of the selection. Let's hide the face lines and the original photo. Let's call back up the template and then click on the image of the original file to bring it back. Press Ctrl or Command Zero to see our entire document in the window. Click on the Effects button and choose Outer Glow. The Layer Style window will open. Choose the Blend Mode as Normal. Put Black as the color. Opacity is at 100%. The Spread is 8% and the Size is 141 pixels. Keep in mind, pending the size of your document and characteristics of your image, other numbers may work better for you. Hide the hair layer and click on the new layer icon. Let's make a composite snapshot of the image and place it on its own layer. To do this, press Ctrl Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Go to Filter, Brush Strokes, and Spatter. The Spatter dialog box will open. I'm choosing 21 for the spray radius and 1 for the smoothness. This filter makes our black glow look like a printed lithograph, 
which was the printing technique used for most of the early posters. Click on the Channels tab and click on the small circular icon on the lower left. This will make all the tonal values of our spattered face glow into a selection. Click back on the Layers tab and we'll save this into a selection. We'll name it Face Glow. Click on the composite image and drag it to the trash since we won't be needing it. Press on the new layer icon and press Alt or Option Delete to fill the selection with black. Let's grab the original layer with the unspattered outer glow into the trash. And we'll rename the spattered face glow face glow. Click on the white layer to make it active and press the letter I to call up your eyedropper tool. Then click on the background of the template to pick up the color. Press Alt or Option Delete to change the white background into the new color. Let's rename this layer Base. Make the Face Glow layer active and click on the new layer icon. Click on the Channels tab and press Control or Command as you click on the Face Lines channel to make it into a selection. Click on the Layers tab and then click down on the base to pick up its color. Press Alt or Option Delete to fill the face lines with that color. Then press Control or Command D to get rid of the selection. Make the hair layer active. We need to make the spattered glow for the hair as well, so repeat the same steps you used for the face glow. We'll make the face glow layer active and rename the face lines layer face lines. Let's also rename the hair glow layer hair glow. Let's make the hair visible and the base visible. With the hair glow layer active, press B to get your pencil tool and make sure you have black as your foreground color. Paint in black to fill in areas of the forehead. We'll finish our Art Deco poster in part two of this tutorial. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.